Hello and welcome to the most highly regarded and well respected contest held yearly throughout the world. Best Anime Girl of the Year. Hang on, I can do better. Best Anime Girl of the Year. Yes, I'm aware I am 18 years too late, but in this video I'm going back in time to the dawn of the digital age of animation to test which girl can push herself out of the TV screen and into our hearts. Fans and brethren will flock to dispute who held the reddest blush, who spoke the cutest buaka, and who flashed the tastiest heavenly slice as all girls will be judged on their moe power level, be put into a dere subcategory, and subjected to more intangible nonsense that we as a fandom have come to know and love. As a disclaimer, my opinion in this video is entirely the word of Christ and cannot be rebutted as it is historical fact, and also as a beginning statement I will probably go down in otaku history as Hitler, so <laughs> to many of you who disagree with me, I am here to quite literally spark the biggest debate ever and gun down innocent waifu, all to expand my agenda. Without further ado, let's get on to the video. 2000 was a hard year for anime girls. This marked the first year anime was produced digitally as a majority and the shift from cell to digital was certainly a lot harder on some than others. Ew. Jesus Christ! So pickings are slim here but I'll do my best to outline the top girls. Firstly, any girls from Excel Saga are not included as the series was coming to an end and I'm only going to be including girls from series who made their appearance in the same year. Now, on to the contestants. Boys B appeared at first glance to be a harem, with at least 12 reskinned girls all fighting over love. But it ended up being a below average drama with below average romance. While there was a large focus on romantic encounters, there were too many uninteresting characters to care for and the whole series felt very lacklustre. The girls do come in all shades of hair colour however, but only one personality type. Nuts good. Miami Guns had appropriately named Yao and Lu, two generic Japanese schoolgirls fighting crime in Miami, Florida. But I don't think they got the memo, it was no longer the 80s and these girls are not the ones for me. The girls get to show off from time to time in bikinis and lingerie when they aren't fighting crime in their uniforms, but I can honestly think of at least five other crime fighting pairs who outclassed these girls. Crest of the Stars had a sequel filled with Ab, 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 Abu, Abu. Crest of the Stars had a sequel filled with Ab, an artificial humanoid subspecies, many of which are female. The characteristics of an Ab include blue hair, elf-like ears, and a sensor device on their forehead which telepathically connects them with their ship. The standout for this space series is rightfully Princess Lafiel Abriel. <laughs> Ab Abriel. She has a strong personality and an unshakable will. She also has a much larger lifespan than humans, easily living 200 years and maintaining her youth. She is a skilled marksman and loyal to herself and her friends. This is one Arb who takes the lead and knows what she wants. The girls from Sakura Wars first appeared in a series of video games before debuting on the screen with a four episode OVA series in the 90s, and finally getting a full length series in April of 2000. The female portion of the group primarily consists of Sakura, the spiritual successor to the highly powerful Shinguji power, and wielder of the Arataka sword, Kana, the brutish female muscle monster, Maria, a Russian expert in military tactics, Ri, the clumsy but endearing comic relief, the spoiled and bratish Sumire, Sumire, Sumir, Sumai, Sumai? Fucking writing is one thing, saying it's another and the cutesy healer Iris who acts as a mage with psionic energy powers and wields a teddy bear. Oh, But the girls of Sakura Wars couldn't quite compare to what I found in Handmade May. Oh, this series! May is a cyberdoll maid who's literally one-sixth the size of the average human. She panders more to what I'd like to see out of an old school harem anime. The show is full of tame fan service awkward moments and is actually well animated for its time. Mei is very sweet and she cares for her owner's needs. She has a charging port in her back 
and despite her size, she attempts all manner of household chores like cooking and doing laundry. She's not the only Cyberdoll, there are several others, some of which are trying to compete with her and the others are trying to acquire her secrets. Denshin Mamote Shugogeten is the OVA sequel to the 1998 series of the same name. Shaorin is a moon spirit who is dedicated to protecting her master, even from household items like vases and the TV. She is learning of the current world after spending thousands of years in solitude and is very dedicated to her master. Though there are two other spirits attached to Tasuke, one to bring her master pleasure and happiness, and the other to put him through trials and tribulations, Shaorin's sweet nature steals the show as she becomes accustomed to the 21st century life. Geobreeder's Breakthrough succeeds the 1998 OVA series. It has several main female leads, all of whom centre themselves around the male protagonist. This show had the unique blend of taking itself way too seriously in some parts, but then attempting slapstick comedy and nudity in others. While there are six girls in total, the two standouts would have to be Yuka Kikushima and Eiko Rando for their beauty and personality, respectfully. Labyrinth of the Flames. Oh, I love this OVA. It provided some over-the-top fan service and Russian samurai action, not even kidding, but none of the girls are worth mentioning. X Driver puts Lorna Endo and Lisa Sakakino behind the wheel of futuristic race cars, but the series as a whole focused more on the AI controlled technology aspect and the issues that arose than the actual personality of the girls themselves. Does anyone remember any of these girls? Probably not. Well, I'll just get to the point because there's really only a few series anyone remembers from this year anyway. Steel Angel Kurumi received four short stories after the climax of the original series. In this short OVA, the girls take to dating and becoming proficient in the art of Japanese womanhood. While fun little skits for fans of the series, unfortunately with the shorter length and lack of episodes, the girls weren't as fleshed out as in the series. Blood the Last Vampire made its way to the big screens and showed original character Saya kicking some serious living and undead butt, donning the culturally appropriate sailor suit school uniform and the Japanese katana, Saya hunts, oh my god how do I say that, chiropterans? Saya hunts chiropterans? She hunts vampires and reveals herself not only to be deadly but also beautiful and graceful as a creature of the night. Ah My Goddess made its first and only jump to the big screen with the 2000 movie, bringing back everyone's favourite trio of goddesses, Belle Dandy, Erd and Skuld. This time Belle Dandy's memories are erased and she wreaks havoc on the earth with her former mentor and disgraced god, Celestin. Which girl is better is a matter of opinion, but all of them deserve a spot on this video's nominations. While the main Card Captor Sakura series came to an end, the second movie, The Sealed Card, also hit the big screens in July of the same year. With popular opinion being that the second movie far surpasses the first, Sakura deserves a mention as she is one of the most beloved Maho Shoujo ever to come out of the industry, and this movie was her last on-screen appearance in over 17 years. Sakura faces her final battle, accepts her feelings, and builds up the courage to bring the franchise to a stunning end. From clail cards to trap cards, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters also made its debut in 2000. And while the Dueling Kingdom was mostly male dominated, there were a few girls to keep Yugi and the gang on their toes. Taya Gardner aka Anzu Mazaki is Yugi's childhood friend and often brings clarity and a voice of wisdom to the gang. With limited dueling ability, Taya is always there on the sidelines to cheer for her friends, provide a helping hand and isn't afraid to put herself on the line in a tough spot. And Taya has grown up! Oh, maybe too much. And after watching the series as an adult, she has grown up. This is not how I remember it. But let's not forget about Mai Valentine, aka Mai Kujaku. Mai is the saucy blonde bombshell who uses her looks to get her way. Mai is an independent rogue, and while at first cold and standoffish, she does later take a particular liking to Joey and the gang. Beautiful and brash, she can also throw down and hold her own in the dueling ring, taking a special liking to her harpy cards. She has proved her merit as a duelist on several occasions. 
Fully Cooly, FLCL or Footy Cooty is a series that's probably more relevant now than ever with the long-awaited 18-year sequel having just been released. This series is truly a wacky blend of the most random shit happening and pretty much defines just how weird and seedy an anime can get. So if you like your women batshit crazy and possibly mentally unstable, Haruko Haruhara, Haruko Haruhara, <laughs> fuck! Haruko Haruhara and Mamma Mi, ma fucking Mamma Mia! Haruko Haruhara. <laughs> I sound like English the anime. Haruko Haruhara and Mami Mi. Mami Mi. <laughs> Haruko Haruhara and Mami Mi Samejima are the girls for you. It took me like seven tries to pronounce those names correctly. And I don't think I can do it again. Mami Mi is rebellious and struggling to find her purpose in life. And she may be more appealing if she didn't spend a large amount of the series hitting on her boyfriend's 12 year old brother. On the other hand, you have Haruko, who I'm still trying to work out exactly why she does things, but claiming to be an alien, she rides a yellow Vespa, smashes people in the face with a bass guitar, shoots bullets and missiles, also out of the bass guitar, and makes completely random and quite possibly fictitious statements. She has pink hair, she wears goggles, and opens interdimensional space channels out of her host Naota's protruding forehead dick. <laughs> I don't know what to call what is happening here, but these girls are freaky. I've left some serious contenders here for last, with a full-length series running from April to September, a Christmas special that aired on Christmas Day, and the all-powerful manga man Ken Akumatsu cameoing himself in the series as a guest appearance, the girls from Love Hina provided the perfect present, slowly but surely sparking international debates about who would penetrate Keitoro's heart and capture him in romance. Naru Narusagawa was an early example of a Sundare character archetype and certainly became a fan favourite as well as the undisputed poster girl for Love Hina. Mitsumi Otohime was clumsy but alluring with her kind and happy-go-lucky nature. Shinobu Maehara provided the gentle, wife-like quality while having subtle depth and strong willpower, mastering the art of cooking, cleaning and caretaking. Motoko Aoyama has her strong, stern and independent nature, but below this farcical armour lies weakness and vulnerability akin to a delicate flower. And the last two girls, Bobo the Monkey and Mrs. Doubtfire. Seriously, I don't know how anyone <laughs> likes either of these two. So, out of all the girls in the year of 2000, who gets to stand on the pedestal of glory and fame? The best girl of 2000 is... Shinobu Maehara! While small in stature, Shinobu stands tall over the rest of the girls for her girlfriend-like qualities. She's come a long way in the series. She is not violent like her other counterparts in Love Hina, and she is just the best. And if you disagree with me, I will fight you all to the death because Shinobu comes a long way and is best girl because she is non-violent and angelic and soft and caring and kind and out and anyone who says otherwise. <laughs> On that note, thus concludes the award ceremony for best girl of 18 years into the past. Did you agree with me? If so, thank you. You may enter heaven as my disciple. If you disagreed, let me know who was your best girl for the year. I can already predict I have an unpopular opinion here, but if you enjoy otherwise, be sure to stay tuned because over the next coming weeks I'll be covering a whole decade of girls ranging all the way from 2000 through to 2010. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate your ongoing support, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.